Hello and welcome to another edition of Good Morning Pattaya, Pattaya Channel's very own breakfast show. I'm your host, Nick Pendrell, and joining me back again is my wonderful co-host, Carolyn. Hi, Nick. Great to be here. Great to see you back. Thank you. And it's also great to see our guest today, who's Patrick, and he's an author. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, authors, every author has a different genre. Which one's yours? Well, I, I'd, I'd like to think that my, um, my main contribution to literary work is uh, the book that I've just finished called Universes. But in actual fact, the most popular book that I've, I've written is Lords of the Ring, which is about the national sport of Thailand, Muay Thai. Right, mm -hmm. right. So uh, let's, uh, let's do one at a time. So, <laughs> what a good way to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's very different subjects. That uh, shows the two diverse. Very diverse, yeah. yeah. Let's start with uh, Lord of the Rings then. Mm. So uh, Muay Thai. Right, well, I've been involved with Muay Thai for uh, 40 years. 40, uh, wow. When I first came over to Thailand, and I was absolutely impressed with the fighting spirit of the Muay Thai, the, the whole rituals. Mm. So I started to follow it, and, and then over the years I got very much involved with the industry of Muay Thai. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, the events, the championships, world championships. And uh, so I got to go to a lot of the big events. Mm -hmm. And then I started to realise that these absolute superstars, they're un undefeated, you know, in, in, mm -hmm. in, their, um, in their boxing genre. Uh, so. Uh, I decided to put together a, a book called Lords of the Ring, which is sort of mm -hmm. the chronicle uh, from the, that traces the, the ancient Muay Thai, uh, which I began then with the modern Muay Thai in the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, the fights that they did with against the Americans and the Europeans, and then the current champions today. So it's a. Uh, Right. It's the full wrap-up of the entire story. Right, and um, so I, I'm not a big expert on Muay Thai, certainly not compared to you. No. So, um, that, where, how did you do your research? Because I can imagine uh, most of it's written in Thai. Well, well, you know, it's international sport now, Muay Thai. The, the, the secrets of Muay Thai are, are in, are in the, um, you know, the annals of the sport. And mm. uh, I'm, when I was uh, first came, I don't want to say how old I am, but <laughs> when, I, when, I was in, when I was 19, I made my first trip across to uh, Thailand in the 60s. Yeah. Um, I went to Rajadhanam Stadium and I saw this amazing uh, spectacle. Mm. So I went to a camp and I started to, in those days you were told to go and kick a banana tree. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and, and because I didn't really believe that we'd understand it. but. After time, you, you showed that you were you wanted to learn. You understood the technique, and so you learnt the eight weapons, which are the two, the two fists, the two the two elbows, the two knees, and the two kicks to, uh, legs to kick mm -hmm. with. So, uh, from there, you then break it down further and further until you understand the the nuances of the sport. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, it can be understood, and and you can research it, and right. and it's there. The materials are available. But in terms ah. of the history, because mm. uh, I was just re reading the back of the book, and it mm. says it goes back for. Ooh, Thousands, thousands long, of years. Long yeah. time. Thousands of years. There's, there's debate about whether it came from China or whether it was originated in Thailand. Of course, the Thais say it was originated in yeah. Thailand. I, mean, yeah. I can imagine. Of course. Well, I, I say it's originated in Thailand too. Yeah. So, but, but it came from the battlefield um, when they were fighting uh, man to man with the, with the when they'd lose their, their sword, they'd have to use a, an arm instead, so they used the, the elbow right. um, for the short dagger. Mm -hmm. And then they'd kick like a lance. So they adapted from the battlefield to. Uh, a physical sport of the eight weapons of the body. Right, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. So is, is there any other books on the subject? Oh, there's, there's lots, there's mm. lots, but nothing talks about the modern champions. Okay. And the, uh, uh, I did it as simply as I could because there's so many great books by teachers who bring out on Muay Thai. And, and, and unless you're a real student of the sport, you, you, you can get a bit lost in it. So I decided to write it in a sort of a uh, in a paperback um, mm -hmm. form, uh, you can read it through quickly. You could read the whole book probably in a, in a weekend, mm. and, and then you could then go back and look at the some of the details a bit more closer. Mm. But, but it was designed so that people written so that people could uh, take it and then be able to understand the sport, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, then then go into the mm. into the more technical books, which are, mm. right. are, are everywhere yeah. that you can. You know, there's probably if you walked into Asia books, you'd probably see. 50 of them, oh, okay. written on, you know, aspects of Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, uh, it covers, uh, but most of the content is about the champions. Uh, yes, yes. I, 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 I give a summary, you know, at the mm. beginning about, you know, the whole history of the, how the sport evolved, uh, a few chapters, and, and but then I start with the, the, the challenge to Muay Thai supremacy in the 70s, mm. when you had the great, you know, when Bruce Lee was ruled and then mm. there was yeah. Dennis Alexio and all these great, um, uh, 
uh, USA fighters and they mm. challenged the Thais and, and, and some of them beat the Thais and the Thais then went into a, a complete review of what's happened to the great sport mm. and then the 80s they bounced back and, right. yeah. and, and, and today you know in the rules of Muay Thai they will not get beaten. Mm. Mm. Now you know obviously there's MMA in the cage yeah. which different rules but uh, stand up uh, in the ring Full weapons, uh, the ties are the best. Wow. So, what happened between the seventies and the eighties that uh, when you know, kung fu was higher, and then there was mai tai, and then it, oh, it changed. Hot. So, yeah. what? How did it change over? Well, I, I, I think that the the, the there was no real uh, adjudicators, mm -hmm. um, and the ties went across overseas, and they they were told they can't use their elbows, or they're told this, and then they had judges that sort of ruled differently, so they got beaten. So then they became far more cautious about mm -hmm. challenges and they stipulated that the rules had to be the way of the traditional Thailand rules with the five rounds, three minutes, mm -hmm. the grapplings allowed, uh, the use of the gloves, everything was sort of um, stated clearly so that to give the Thais an, an even playing field. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, uh, and uh, following that, um, the, the Thais began to remain supreme and, right. and they've continued on from there. Right. So the book, uh, it, it has sort of uh, miniature biographies of Yes, yes, I go yeah. through 20 fighters, you know, the current fighters who are fighting yeah. today. Mm. The, the, the top 20. Mm. Mm. Um, how, long, how long did it take you to research it? Oh, well, I've, I've been following Muay Thai for uh, 30 years. Yeah. I mean, I had a program on TV called Muay Thai, okay. which wow. was the first English a commentary of Muay Thai, mm -hmm. uh, and I did it in Channel 7 in, in, in Thailand for five years right. until K1 came over and then completely wow. offered a different interpretation that the TV went for and so Muay Thai, Thais versus Thai wasn't that popular. Yeah. Right. But in that period I got to understand uh, you know, a lot about the fighters and then I kept a record and then I, then I, I, I wrote for the every week for a while with the Bangkok Post mm. on, 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 um, on Muay Thai. Uh, in the ring, I had a column. Um, I've stopped writing that because I wanted to concentrate on more of the bigger issues of, of the sport. So, mm. I, but, I, but I've had a long, many years of of, um, mm. of studying it and, and intimate contact with the, with the champions. Mm. Right. Is it? I mean, my understanding is it's a male sport. Are there any? Females? No, there's females. Yes, there females. Are females too? But 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 okay. more popular outside Thailand. In in, okay. in in Thailand, there's a a few taboos still in the like right. the women don't stand in the same ring as the men oh, yeah. and things right. like that which is sort of you know it's changing but it's still in thailand the female muay thai is not looked with the same amount of respect mm. as they give to the men yeah we could carry on and uh, spending a whole episode just on mm. the muay thai but i uh, also want to talk about uh, your your other book could you give us an introduction to that one universes oh uh, well, that's a big subject mm -hmm. a, you know uh uh, more recently, I, I, I've been a, a journalist for many years mm -hmm. and um, editor of newspapers in, in overseas and in, in Australia where I come from. When I decided to, to, to go more into writing, I, I, I wrote down five books I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And I picked the hardest one that I decided to write first. Right. And that was I wanted to write about the universe. Right. Well. Because I, I, I remember reading uh, Stephen Hawking's book, The uh, a Brief Passage mm -hmm. of Time. Mm -hmm. Um, and that really, uh, it was able to take a lot of a very complex mm. matter called the universe and explain it. And I thought, that's wonderful. But in my understanding, and I, I studied uh, holistic medicine, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is the universe is not just science, it's a living organism. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why can't someone write that way about the universe mm. rather than just mm. the science? Mm -hmm. that's so the so I. I embarked on the subject of writing universes, which took me 15 years. Wow. Yeah, wow. stopped it's and started a pretty big many, subject many, many that times. Be yes. mm. And I, you know, for me, the greatest thing was to finish it. Yeah. I can mean, imagine. To, you know, <laughs> to get on yeah. with another book. Yes. <laughs> because I, yes. uh, but but, it's, it, but in saying having done that, you know, and actually articulating it, which I think I did quite well, um, I've now been convinced I should do a follow up book, uh -huh. uh, which I'm going to do even though I'm bumping the other books aside a bit, but I want yeah. to do Beyond the Universe. Okay. Is that going to take you another 15 years? No, no, I, I, certainly, <laughs> no. I certainly hope not. Um, I, 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 I sort of began it now, and, I, and I'm fairly confident I can do it by, by about next March, April. Oh, that's okay. not yeah, bad at all. Yeah. Mm, because I sort of know where I'm going. The hardest part was writing a book such as Universes was, you know, where is it going to? We, 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 how you, what are the chapters? What are the dimensions? Mm. How far do you want to go to? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you losing your, your, your reader? 
Um, but, um, you know, so I had to stop and start a few times. Mm -hmm. But now the second time, it, it, you know, I, I sort of know where I'm, I know where this finished and I know where I can take it to. Right, mm. right. Because it's very, um so this is more written for the lay person? No, I wouldn't say right. the lay. I, I, I divide the book into two sections. One, one is called Science of the Universe, okay. which I sort of had to go through the technical side of what our, how our brains comprehend what the universe is or how our mind analyzed it. And, and then after the halfway, then the second part of the book I called Universal Beings, and that is what as human beings can learn from this understanding of what the universe mm. is. Mm. And, if, and, I, and if you explain that actually the universe is, is alive, it's a living entity. Yeah. Uh, therefore, then we are part of that living entity, and 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 therefore, uh, how we live should reflect what the universe is. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's such a technical subject. Uh, yeah, I, yes. I can understand the 15 years in the in the making, mm. but uh, mm. what kind of studies did you have to make to uh, be qualified to uh, okay. write something? Like okay. This? Well, I, well, I, I, on the biology, you know, working out what what, what is everything, you know, what is living. Mm. You know, I studied um, biology mm -hmm. and, and natural medicine uh, to understand, you know, that, the, that, that plants and everything is alive, like human beings are alive. And then I then looked at the quantum. I studied right. the quantum mechanics and started to realise that, you know, energy also is alive. Mm -hmm. And it actually, you know, an electron doesn't just go to an atom. Mm -hmm. It's actually willingly going there because it's got a consciousness. An electron has a consciousness. Really? Isn't it? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Not just my, my, my viewpoint, other... Other um, scientists are reaching that same conclusion too mm -hmm. when they look at the quantum world. Mm -hmm. And that to me was fine because then I could actually put it all together. Right. Mm. From, from, from the uh, subatomic particles being alive to organic beings such as human beings mm -hmm. being alive. And then all part of this, like, you, couldn't, you wouldn't say your fingernail's alive, you'd say the whole body's alive. You yeah. couldn't say a particle's alive, the, the whole universe is alive. Mm -hmm. So that was the, mm -hmm. the, the, the real important matter was to yeah. link up the quantum with the biology. Mm. So uh, you say that the, uh, the the first half is is the it's science, science, science. To, along the Hawking style, but mm. going to areas that he didn't really want to yeah. go to. Yeah. yeah. But the second half is more of a holistic sort. Yes, of human beings. Education. I go into you know the way in which we, we we conceive and how how our senses perceive the universe, what we don't perceive because we can't perceive because our senses don't take us there. Uh, what, 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 what it is, you know, the way we uh, human beings are, what, what are the things that, that we should be doing that, that, that the universe is part, uh, shows what the, the way and that we still, still tend to go the other way. Right. So I went into that as well. So you're raising some quite important uh, questions about how we look after the world as it is a living organism. Uh, well, well I, I didn't go too far okay. on, on, on the environmental way because be, uh, I'm, I'm a great believer. I'm, I'm a very much a green thinking person and, yep. and, and believe in, in that the, we have to face the, the, the dangers of, of a warming planet and, and it's going to be quite horrific in, in, in the next century but my book was more about accepting the fact if human beings make that mistake they are but there's something bigger going on the, right. the, you know eventually the, the 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 planet won't survive anyway because the sun will die but that's not the point the point is where where we are now and how we relate to this living universe that mm. was really mm. and, and therefore how are we as universal beings mm. I call ourselves right. rather than human beings Universal so the interrelationship beings. between yeah, those. The yeah. universe, uh, as human, uh, as universal beings, how we relate to the universe. Mm. Uh, that to me was the uh, the second part of the book that hasn't been touched on by anybody else before, to my understanding. Right. Mm. So how can our readers get copies of the two books? Okay. Uh, the 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 um, through the uh, Bangkok books, they 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 put them out on the. Um, on the uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. so you can get them on Amazon. There's hard copies available through Asia Books, mm -hmm. um, and there's other a number of publishers coming out. But the universe is on. I've, I've got a, a major publisher looking at it now, right? Um, right. That's which, which we, yeah. yeah, and and so the second edition of that will be coming out with right. a new publisher, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that that will get you know into a bigger audience. Um, Muay Thai, I get lots of people, martial artists want, mm -hmm. want to get it, they buy it in bulk and, 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 right. and we sell it with Asia Books and, mm -hmm. and it, it's sort of uh, for those that 
like the sport of Muay Thai <laughs> and love it like I do, mm-hmm. um, they, they want to get it because it's it's, it's all there in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. fabulous. We could carry on talking all, a, all morning, but unfortunately we're out of time. A fascinating subject. Thank you for telling us all about it. Uh, thank, thank you for having me here. Thank you. And stay uh, tuned for part two.